She blocked my video. I see how it is. Good evening, everyone. Panelists, we do have attendees with us this evening already online and we are live. So give me just a moment to get you all set up. For those that are joining us for the Foothill Information Night this evening, welcome. Uh, we will begin at about six o'clock. So feel free to do a few things until then as we get set up. Thanks so much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Foothill Technology High School School of Choice Information Night. We will begin just about six o'clock. We're just getting our panelists online here, as well as getting our interpreters set. Well, hello, Principal Gibbs. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, Good. evening, everyone. Glad that you're here. So we've got a few attendees online, but I'm just getting everyone set up, so I will let you know when we're all ready.
Again, good evening to everyone who's joined us so far for Foothill Technology High School's School of Choice Information Night. We're just getting everyone set up. Just want our panelists to know that we are live and do have attendees on already. We will be getting our closed captioner, I'm sorry, our Spanish interpreter ready in just a few moments. And we'll begin right around six o'clock. So you've got 10 minutes to take care of a few things before we get started. Thanks. Good evening to our panelists and attendees. Again, we are live and do have attendees already going. Uh, we will be starting at about six o'clock. So everyone has about 10 minutes or so as we get everyone settled in and all set up. We'll see you in about 10 minutes. Good evening, everyone. I see more panelists and attendees joining us. We are live and do have attendees already waiting to go. Welcome to Foothill Technology High School School of Choice Information Night. It is bound to be a really great presentation. We will begin in about 10 minutes or so. We're just waiting for some more people to join us as well as our Spanish interpreter. So go take care of a few more things and we'll get started right about six o'clock. Thanks.
would help if I unmute. Hello, Ms. Ferris. <laughs> Welcome. We are now live and we do have attendees. We are just getting set up. Welcome to everyone who's joining us this evening for our Foothill Technology High School School of Choice Information Night. It is really great to see some of these familiar names in the attendee list. Glad that you could join us this evening. We're just getting a few more housekeeping things ready. We've got our interpreter who will be joining us shortly. So give us just a few more minutes and we'll get started. Thanks, everybody. I see that we have Ms. Castaño on. Hi, Maria, how are you? You're muted. <laughs> Just so you know, we are live and do have attendees already. If it's okay with you, in just a few minutes, I'll have you announce to everyone that they can get Spanish closed captioning. Sure. Uh, if they click on the interpreting button. Okay. Um, and then we'll switch you over to the, okay. to the other audio channel. Yes. Principal Gibbs, when I do switch Maria over to the other audio channel for Spanish interpretation, you won't be able to hear her anymore, but she'll be able to hear you. Uh, Principal Gibbs, just so that I know, are we waiting on any other panelists this evening? No, I think we're all here. Okay, so we'll just give everyone a few more minutes to join us and we'll get started just a minute or two after six o'clock if that works. That does. All right. So Maria, if you don't mind letting folks know that if they need Spanish interpretation, to go ahead and click the interpretation button below. Okay. Buenas noches a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Maria Castaño, soy intérprete para el distrito de Ventura. Y si gustan escuchar esta presentación en español, por favor, oprima el icono en la parte de, de abajo de su pantalla. Es un icono que parece un mundo. Gracias. Thank you so much. And I am gonna go ahead and transfer you to the other station if that works for you. Sure. Okay, thank you. All right, we ready? We should be, but it's giving me a hard time moving her over to the Spanish. Of course, this is Zoom. Of course that's gonna happen. Of course. <laughs> It's 2021. I thought 2020. Yeah, no. Oh, 20, 2020 is leaking in. That's... I'm telling you. Um, I will see what I can do about getting it done, but it is not giving me the option to move over to 
Spanish. So let me see what I can do. You go ahead and start. And uh, Maria, just hold tight for a moment. Mm -hmm. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Russell Gibbs. I'm the principal here at Foothill Technology High School. Thank you for coming to our School of Choice Information Night. Hopefully you'll find everything that you need on, um, on whether or not you want to apply to Foothill for a School of Choice window. But I just want to thank you very much for being here. I'm joined by a very esteemed panel of Foothill Technology Dragons. I would like to introduce the assistant principals here at Foothill. I have Miss Katie Tedford and Miss Stephanie Cruz here. I also have our esteemed athletic director, Coach Jamal Brown. And of course, I have Miss Darcy Duffy. She is our college and career tech and also our site CTE coordinator. And most importantly, we have Miss Elizabeth Ferris. She is our ASB president and class of 2021. And she's gonna kick off the night by telling everyone about her four years here at Foothill and what a wonderful experience it's been, hopefully. No, I'm kidding, but uh, I'm very excited for her to kick off the night tonight. Um, Ms. Ferris, are you ready to go? I am. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Elizabeth Ferris. Um, as Principal Gibbs said, I am the ASB president this year. I have been in ASB and a student at Foothill for all four years. I've also been a, an athletic a student. Sorry, let me start again. <laughs> I have also been a scholar athlete all four years. So I'm pretty well spread around this campus. I know my way around and I also have two parents that work at Foothill. So I've known Foothill more than just four years. So I'm definitely the student to ask if you have a question. Um, so my future plans, I am planning to go to a four-year college next year. I'm not sure which one yet. Um, I'm planning to major in kinesiology or biology, something that will get me into the medical field so that I can get a doctorate's degree and I hope to become a physical therapist. So I chose Foothill because yes, even though my mother works there and my dad now, um, I chose Foothill because of the small school that it is. I wanted to have more of a sense of community in my school. And I really got that sense. Sometimes I would take sick days and just come to, my, to work with my mom because I wanted to. Um, don't tell my old principal that from Cabrillo, <laughs> um, but I would come because I loved the school and I loved all how all the students interacted. It just wasn't something that I was used to. It's an amazing school where all students feel welcome and included and just this sense of community is so strong within Foothill. So that's really why I wanted to come to Foothill. So like I said, Foothill has a super strong sense of community. It also has lots of like amazing classes and clubs and extracurriculars that you can do. So we have classes like ASB, drama, we have med tech, bioscience, DTech, journalism, debate. We have our sports teams, all amazing. And I believe you have a video later that you're gonna watch that goes more in depth on those. Um, so your students are gonna be very well respected at Foothill. That's one of the things that I love about it. The staff doesn't treat them like they're lower than them. They treat them as equals and I love that. Um, so we, our teachers and our staff are so supportive. And again, sense of community at Foothill is one of my favorite things. So yeah, that's what I love about Foothill. That's why I chose it. And it's a great school for anything you wanna do. Well, thank you, Ms. Ferris. I really, really appreciate that. Great start to the evening, so thank you. We have a pretty basic agenda tonight. We did our welcomes and introductions, so we'll go over the lottery process. You'll get an overview of Foothill from what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis with the academics, um, the athletic programs, what the teachers are like, uh, the culture as well. And at the end, I'll share a link to our campus tour video that Ms. Ferris let you know on. It was produced by our ASB and you'll get a virtual tour of the campus and you also have more student interviews about what their academic experience and social experience has been here at Foothill. Um, yeah, it's on YouTube and I'll share the link with you at the end. Um, it should be very informative. I do wanna ask a big favor of everyone. I know questions are gonna come up and you have a basic idea of what we're gonna go over tonight. So when you see a slide 
that corresponds to your question. If you could please um, like have that question ready and you, you can raise your hand or take your questions at the end, but we are gonna take all the questions at the end. Obviously, if you're raising your hand or if you have a question, uh, we'll take all that, but make sure you get your questions ready for the slide that you see it. Um, I believe you can put that in the Q and A, I believe. So yes, um, is open and can be used as well. Excellent. So yeah, when you see the slide that corresponds to your question, go ahead and put it in, or you could also wait to the end if you don't happen to see a slide that corresponds to it. With that being said, we have our lottery process and assistant principal, Ms. Katie Tedford is gonna take it away from here. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs. And thank you everybody for joining us tonight. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you consider Foothill as an option for your student. I know that that is a, a challenging choice and, and our, our purpose tonight is to give you information about our school and our programs so that you can find the, the school that best suits your students' needs. Um, to get us started tonight, most of the questions we have surrounding the school of choice process do have to do with the lottery. So we figured in the interest of easing questions, it's best to address those needs and, and answer some of those questions right off the bat. Um, and then we'll get into the, what I would call the good stuff, our programs and what we do here. Uh, lots of questions usually about the lottery process. As you know, the deadline to apply for the School of Choice Lottery is January 29th by 4 p.m. And one thing I would emphasize is that to be considered for Foothill, everyone does need to apply for the lottery. So even if you have a student who is currently attending and will be attending next year, and you possibly have an eighth grader you would like to attend, you still need to complete an application through the school of choice process. Only students who apply through that process are eligible to attend Foothill in the fall. And the application process is completely online. There's a link on Foothill's website that takes you straight to the district's website to apply. If you need any help with that, you can call the call center at our district and they are more than happy to help you um, get through that online application process. The lottery is usually held in mid-February and the letters are usually mailed out in late February and early March. And one of the things that, that helps families is to understand what the letters look like, what you might receive and what it means so that you don't get a letter in the mail at 6 p.m. at night and have to wait till the next morning to call us. Um, we value being transparent with our families, our district values being transparent with our families so that families can make the best choice for their student. So one thing that we have noticed uh, and parents often ask is how many people are, apply, what are the odds? Uh, I can't predict that this year. This is certainly a strange year, but I am happy to share with you what the statistics have been in the past and what the odds have been in the past. They have been consistent for the past approximately five years. So traditionally, our freshman class has close to 300 students and approximately 600 apply. So traditionally, for the freshman class, there's about a 50% acceptance rate. For other grade levels, we don't accept as many students because those grade levels are full. So that varies every year, um, but it is typically 10 to 20 students are accepted in, in those grade levels. Um, but it depends on how many students stay from their current year. So the odds are less at the upper grades, but again, also not predictable. So we encourage people to apply. When they apply, everybody will get a letter. Um, whether they're in or not, everybody who applies will get a letter. And they will also get an email with the email address that they registered with during the lottery process. And it's nice to know what the, what the letters say and what they mean. There are three letters that we send out. One letter says you are accepted. And if you are accepted and you receive the acceptance letter, there is a pretty tight turnaround to return paperwork to the school. And the reason for that is because there are other students who are on a waiting list who would like to attend uh, Foothill. And we want to make sure that we can honor their requests as soon as possible. So if you are accepted, we do need a prompt returning of the materials. Otherwise, families actually will lose their spots. So first group gets a letter that says they're accepted and they have to return paperwork quickly. The second group receives a letter that says you are on a wait list. And it's an active waiting list. And what that means is it is possible that we could get to your student. Um, you should continue registering at your boundary school, but you are on the wait list. Um, we aren't able, and actually the school site isn't aware of where people are on the waiting list. We don't play betting games with that. Um, we, we tell you as much information as we can, um, but we actually, the school site does not have the list of what number you are or how close you are, um, but it means there is a possibility. And then the third letter is, is the least pleasant, but to be honest and transparent, it is a letter that says, um, 
we do not think we will be able to get to next year. And what that means is historically, wherever you are on that list is farther than we've gotten in the past five years. And we want to make sure we communicate that with you so that you um, can find a school that is the right fit for your student. Um, one question uh, that, I, that I saw and that is on here as well is that siblings are given priority if they apply, they still have to apply. But in Ventura Unified at all of our schools of choice actually, um, siblings are given priority in the lottery if the student will attend here next year. So if you have a current 9th, 10th or 11th grader, meaning they next year would be a 10th, 11th or 12th grader, and you have an incoming 8th grader, that 8th grader would receive priority. One of the questions was how many um, spots is that? It varies and it varies greatly. Um, it can be 20 to, to, to 40 um, would be approximate, but it, it, that there's a lot of variety in that one. Um, another question that people ask a lot is the twins and what happens with twins. Um, if a family has twins or any multiples, actually, you could have triplets or more. Um, if you have multiples, those students receive one spot in the lottery. So they're either both or all three accepted or not. Um, so that is the policy on twins. And let's see, I think that's it. Could I have the next slide, please, Mr. Gibbs? I will answer. I see a, I see a question that popped up that I, that I would be happy to answer publicly. I think others would benefit from it. it has, it's a question about the lottery process and how it is done. Um, the lottery process is not done at the school site. The lottery process is actually done at the district office. Computer software is utilized. Um, I am told that a police officer is present for the drawing, as are the superintendents and some other persons from our community to ensure the authenticity of that lottery. Um, but it is it is not done in the teacher workroom at Foothill. That's the good news. It is done with quite a bit of transparency to members of our community. Um, I believe the school board is present as well, or at least several representatives from or one at least representative of our school board is there too. So it is done um, not like you New York does it with balls in a large auditorium, but it is done with some community uh, supervision of that lottery. And then the list is actually maintained by our district office and Foothill is told um, who is accepted, but we're not told the rest of the list. So, a uh, great deal of work has been done to maintain the authenticity of that lottery process. To be eligible to apply to Foothill, um, we will take any student that resides within the Ventura Unified boundary. Um, one thing that we're proud of is we accept students um, from all performance levels. You do not have to have the highest GPA to attend Foothill. You just need to reside in the city of Ventura. Um, but that is a pretty firm rule because we do have a lot of students that want to attend. There are not exceptions to, to living within the city of Ventura. So um, we do have families who maybe live in Camarillo and they were able to attend uh, Ventura Unified Middle School. That does not make you eligible to attend Foothill. To attend Foothill at the time that you enter the school lottery, you have to reside within Ventura Unified's boundaries. So that's pretty important because we do have a lot of families who get transfers into our middle schools, but that does not make them eligible for um, attending Foothill next year. And we have to make sure that you live in the boundaries during the school of choice lottery. And part of the lottery will require verification of addresses and it will require it during the, the time of the lottery. All right, next slide, please. Uh, one thing to mention is that we do have, we are a small campus. We are a campus about half the size of our big comprehensive high schools. And while that is an amazing thing, that does also mean that we do not offer all of the things that some of those larger schools do. And so music is something that often comes up because music is a program uh, that with our size, we are not able to offer. Uh, so students are able to participate in music but they must participate in music at their boundary high schools. So for example, if a family resides in Buena High School's boundary and they choose to come to Foothill and are selected to come to Foothill, they may participate in band, but only at their boundary high school, which in that family's case would be Buena High School. Um, athletics, students are not allowed to participate in athletics at either of the other boundary schools. Uh, acceptance to Foothill means that they are only allowed to participate in athletics at Foothill. So Foothill does not offer several sports. There are three specifically that we do not offer. We do not offer football, we do not offer wrestling, and we do not offer cheer. And due to the rules and regulations of CIF, students are not allowed to participate in those sports at their boundary schools. So if you come to Foothill um, and you make that choice, football, cheer, and wrestling are not an option. But I am pleased to say that we have some pretty amazing programs 
in every other sport. So I did want to clear up those two things. There are lots of questions about that. Um, we wanted to make sure we get that housekeeping information out of the way so that we can jump into to our NEAT programs. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Assistant Principal Stephanie Cruz to tell you about our programs. Ms. Cruz, you got to unmute. Sorry, thank you. Uh, All of this together. <laughs> you want to make sure you stay muted when you have a three-year-old toddler running around. So, <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, so, one of the things that makes, uh, well, one of the many things that makes Foothill so special are the uh, programs that we do offer: um, our health sciences, our communication, our technology. Uh, we also have a new uh, graphics art program as well as an education uh, pathway that we have started as well so um, these are part of uh, what you would what your student would be involved in when they do come to foothill or they have the option to be involved in when they do come to foothill um, as you can see a picture there of one of our students is participating in our health sciences program um, opportunities for internships and so many things within that program like uh, you heard Elizabeth Ferris say earlier that that's one of the reasons that she wanted to be a part of it was because of that program, because of the future that she plans on participating or pursuing when she leaves Quindle. So um, these are just some of the many choices that you will have by uh, being at Foothill. Next slide, please. Um, we do have a very, very small school environment. Um, our school culture, it, you know, it's re like it says, recently spotted by WestEd.org as one of 40 schools in California for our school culture. Um, we have an amazing student body, um, an amazing ASB. We have a Renaissance program that acknowledges students and their and um, all that, all the good, amazing things that are going on at Foothill. Um, we have opportunities for academic intervention with our FIRE program, uh, which is um, small groups that students meet in uh, to be able to meet with teachers if they need to for additional support. Um, individualized attention to students' academic and social needs with only 970 to 1,000 kids on campus. Uh, we really are able to target more um, uh, students, especially if there is a need there. Um, on average, our classes uh, have approximately 34 students per teacher, um, but many of our classes actually do end up smaller than that, again, because we do have that small school environment. Mr. Gibbs? Um, I, I can't even tell you how amazing our teachers are. Um, there's approximately 35 teachers on campus and man, are they rock stars. I mean, right now with everything being the way it is with distance learning and things like that, our teachers are putting in hours after, upon hours upon hours of additional time, creating lessons, trying to keep students engaged. Um, they are highly educated um, and they are trying, they have so many innovative educational strategies that are going on in their classrooms. It's just amazing. And that will translate when we come back to in-person learning but our teachers have i mean we are a technology magnet school and so fortunately we kind of have a little bit of an edge over the other schools and that we already use a lot of technology in our classrooms and that's one of those things that kind of sets our teachers apart from others and um you know with our recent ap and sbac test scores ranking us amongst the top high schools in um the state as well as the nation and we are the number one school in Ventura County for college preparedness with at least 80% of our graduates being prepared to go on to a four year college or university if they so choose. Uh, we all courses are taught at the college prep level, if not honors or advanced placement level uh, advanced placement level is available for students. Um, and our pass rate is well above the state and national average for most of our classes. 75% of our students have met the UC and A through G requirements compared to the county average of 36.6%. And a lot of those students that are meeting those A through G requirements are taking advanced placement or honors classes and are actually possibly earning college credits if they do take those AP exams at the end of those uh, classes. So definitely rigorous curriculum um, in order to prepare students for, for their future at Foothill. Um, one of the other amazing things about Foothill is we do have a block schedule. So on Mondays, we actually have 
um, a regular schedule with all periods and the periods are shortened, but then the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday, we have 90 minute block periods, which do, which, you know, it's amazing and what it does to allow for instructional strategies and in depth, the teachers can go into each of their subjects. So instead of having six or seven classes a day, students would actually only have three or four classes in a day, but they would be 90 minutes long. And so they are chunked and they are longer periods. Um, students say that they are actually able to concentrate and they feel that having fewer subjects on a given day is actually better for them and it's easier to kind of keep themselves organized. Uh, another wonderful thing and you know the the block scheduling allows for is a lot of project based integration. Uh, a lot of our disciplines and subjects across our you know campus do have project based learning and it's just a different way for students to be able to engage and you know play an active role in their learning when at foothill. Is this still me, Ms. Tedford? I'm sorry, I don't have the slides in front of me. It's me, thank you. I was replying right. to questions. <laughs> thank you, everyone. So one thing I would encourage you to do, you're making a decision about sending your student uh, to a school. And I think that it, as a parent, it is definitely, um, you're trying to get the feel of the school. And I think one great way to do that, and I would encourage you to check out both of these um, sources because it gives you a good feel for the campus. It gives you a feel for the pulse, uh, lets you get to know the students a little bit. So I would watch the video that we have at the end today, which gives you a tour and lets you meet some of our students. But these are two sources that also help you get a feel for the campus. Our student newspaper is student run through a journalism course that we offer. Uh, there are um, ninth through 12th graders in the journalism program this is a nationally award-winning newspaper. It went online, gosh, years ago, um, probably 10 years ago, which was early for high school newspapers to be going online and has been nationally recognized. And the students select the, the types of pieces they'd like to write about, um, issues on campus, sometimes social and off campus, but it, it gives you a great pulse of the school uh, through the eyes of our students, which is a, an important lens. And the other source that will give you lots more information about our programs and let you get a, a peek into our teachers and our classrooms and activities and things that are available is our website. We've got a, a very comprehensive website where when digging through that, but it'll also help you get a feel for the school because we understand that as you're making this decision, you want to, to understand the school environment. And both of those tools are things that we would recommend that you take a look at from, from home because it'll give you a, a good feel for what we're doing at school. Thank you, next slide. Technology is in the name um, and technology is something that we have excelled in uh, since we opened 20 years ago. Um, it is a, a valuable part of instruction and parents often ask, does my child have to be a coder or a gamer to go to Foothill? No, but if they are, there's a place for them as well. Um, Foothill has a well-rounded program. And we do have all of our students taking one technology course in their freshman year that is tied with college and career so that they learn some basic technology skills. We want to make sure that with all this great access to technology and teachers using technology in their instruction that all of our students know how to use it. And that we embed in the freshman year so that when their history teacher in their 11th grade year asks them to Photoshop something or build a website, they all have the basic tools to do that. Um, if your child is not a gamer or is not a coder, that's okay. More than half of the students here are not, uh, but it means that they can use technology proficiently and that technology can be used in learning. Uh, Venture Unified is going one-to-one -one so that when our students return, students will all have access to computers. Um, we have been pretty close to one-to-one -one for about 10 years now, so it is something that our teachers are skilled at. They are using technology in innovative ways, and they are not just using it for word processing. They are using it to increase engagement, to increase access to our students, and to make the curriculum come alive. So technology is something we're, we're quite proud of. Our teachers are, are very used to using it and communicating with students through technology, which is really how our, how our students communicate. Um, in the time of distance learning, it's been an interesting adjustment because um, our teachers are now having to look at how do we use less technology <laughs> because we're, we're at that place right now. So, um, that's something they're aware of as well. Computers have never replaced the humans. And we, I, I would say with great skill, use technology to, to complement how we are working with educating our students. We have a 
um, a very open policy with technology. Students may bring their devices. We have huge, ac great access for the kids and will be one-to-one. -one. But if a student wants to bring their own device, we have always been um, accommodating and welcoming and providing Wi-Fi access codes for students to do that. Some prefer to use their own and that's okay. And some prefer to use ours and some prefer to switch. Um, we do have diverse technologies on campus. We have iPads where we need them. We have full-blown computers where we need them in our digital arts labs. We have Chromebooks where we need them. Uh, we do not have one type of technology because anyone who works with technology knows that there's not one type of device that works for everything. So we value letting our students experiment with and utilize technology that meets their needs. So our digital arts classrooms have traditional computers because that's what you need to run some of those powerful programs. Our um, design tech uh, Strand needs full-blown computers to do drawings and illustrations to work their 3D printers and their, their laser cutters and so that they have the appropriate technology for the tasks at hand. So uh, our students get great exposure to technology in the, in the programs and the choices they make with their electives. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Tedford gave a perfect introduction to these next several slides. So what you'll see here is one how technology is used here on campus and all those these slides were designed with being on campus in mind the technologies that you'll see and the project-based learning design that you'll see have also transcended into distance learning as well so here's you'll get a little snapshot of what it's like to be a foothill student what they kind of do on a daily basis so You'll see in 12th grade that they use um, the explain everything app to show understanding of congressional committees. In 10th grade, uh, chemistry students, they use the Ed Creations app uh, for their chemistry equations for the uh, stoichiometry problems. I never took that in high school and I'm a humanities major. So I hope I get pretty close on that. But uh, moving on to any given morning, they'll um, over their catapult project, they're using their iPads and the software on there uh, for their project design. And they also take photos of their catapults to be used in the teacher evaluation of the project. And great English students uh, draw their symbolic understanding of the book, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, using the Doceri app, and then they post and present on it, Moto. Ninth grade English students use Nearpod on their iPads, and now they just use Nearpod on their Chromebooks uh, for test review. Uh, from there, they can take polls and they can also show their understanding of 1984 and other novels. 12th grade English will use their Chromebooks to create social media pages for characters in Shakespeare's King Lear. Ninth grade physiology students conduct sweat gland lab using iPads and the Inspiration app. So all those things have transcended into distance learning here. That's what a snapshot is when you're on campus, but it's also a snapshot of what students are working on at home. But to show, I mean, it's, we're hoping we're not in hybrid next year when the school year opens. Is it a possibility? Yes, uh, but we are gonna get back to normal one of these days. But in the meantime, distance learning staff has been very well equipped to handle it. Uh, the, I was very impressed with how early the training for distance learning started in this district. Um, and you can see our teachers here. One, they can digitally show how much they miss their students and in addition to telling them every day how much they do miss them. But they're well equipped to handle the rigors of distance learning. Uh, staff has, has utilized Canvas and the Google Classroom platforms more than they ever have before. I mean, they're, all their curriculum, scope and sequence is posted on campus and they're using Google Classroom as a supplement. Uh, the teachers have worked hard to create their curriculum that not only is used up here on campus, but also used at Ventura and Buena as well. Um, they, they've worked hard to make community building activities and spirit events um, through distance learning. Like we've had our, our first two um, like social events, we had Name That Tune Bingo uh, with with uh, the freshmen and sophomores two weeks ago, and then the juniors and seniors last weekend. Uh, we have our um, small groups on campus as well, some that meet in the virtual world and some that are meeting in on campus. Um, and teachers also hold their office hours in addition to just general tut tutoring through Zoom as well. So we're doing our best to reach our students in, in their homes through our digital platforms. Um, 
and I'm just very proud of how our teachers have handled distance learning. I, I'd say it's as good as it gets in terms of this never being done before. Um, I know we all can't wait till it's over to, to where we can get back to what we're really good at, really good at, which is in-person instruction. But um, I see that not much is lacking with the transition that we've all had to deal with. So with that being said, with our student opportunities right here, um, Ms. Darcy Duffy's gonna take it away. Yes, I, I have the pleasure of speaking about student opportunities, which um, are some of the best things about going to high school for any student. And um, we're really proud of what we have to offer at Foothill. So these next few slides are gonna focus on some of the opportunities. So a quick overview, we have ASB, FIRE, which I'll elaborate on, speech and debate, journalism and digital publications, which is known to your book as to most of our parents. Um, we have numerous electives, which include health science classes, um, fine and performing arts, Spanish communications, technology, ethnic and social studies, um, social justice and psychology. Um, and there's probably a few more that we just didn't have room on these slides. And I'm gonna dive deeper into a few of these topics. So go ahead and go to the next slide. The first thing we're gonna dive into are student opportunities, um, career pathways. We're super proud of career pathways. This is something I'm really passionate about. So I'm glad to share with you. The first one we have is our Bioscience Academy. And this is a health science pathway that includes a sequence of courses that um, students are cohorted into. So only students that are part of this Bioscience Academy are taking these courses. Sophomore year includes Bioscience Survey, junior year is Medical Technology, and senior year is biotechnology. And those junior and senior year classes are honors. Um, it pairs really well with our wonderful science curriculum of biology, chemistry, honors physiology, and physics. And so students will leave Foothill um, with a great foundation um, for careers in health science. And the pictures here are from our um, health science pathway. The one on the bottom is when we went out and we were collecting rockfish that then we um, take the DNA sequence from. We've moved on to bees and we've collected on Santa Rosa Island on a four day trip for that with this pathway. And then there's a clip of an ore fish um, when it washed up about eight or nine years ago. Um, that student right now is in medical school. And um, we were able to send two students over to Coastal Marine Bio Labs, our partners, to barcode that fish and have it um, uh, the record posted. So we're super excited. DTEC is our next academy. Our academy, again, this one is cohorted. So students um, are participating in this through 10th through 12th grade. So the specialized classes for DTEC um, are DTEC survey, where you learn a variety of topics and skills and you're doing hands-on work in our DTEC lab, um, which is laser engravers, 3D printers. Um, there is a t-shirt press, um, there's stickers, and there's giant printers for making posters, lots of things for designing. The junior level course includes design, which also overlaps with our art pathway, graphics pathway down here. And so students are learning the digital side of design. And then the senior year ends with our entrepreneur class um, with Mr. Lee, where students are running their own business and and soliciting and filling projects. Kids right now have um, 3D printers at home. Someone was just emailing me today asking to check out more stuff. They have a Cricut to be able to cut out things and they also took home mini t-shirt press. So they're still working, running their entrepreneurship classes um, and we're really proud of our DTEC students. Code.sign is our programming pathway. This is also a series of courses. These are open to any students to take any of these classes um, and students who commit to the pathway will take the whole sequence. And so that's gonna be um, our programming class. And then both of the classes are articulated with Moore Park College. So students choose the honors level. They will do the articulated level which means that they'll get college credit from Mrs. Carr for these classes. So this is great. We talked about AP courses earlier and taking a test to earn that credit. An articulated class um, is something where we're dual enrolled with the community college and we're doing the same work as um, students at the community college. So students are awarded those units at the end. Um, and it's a great thing to have on their transcript. 
our education pathway is our newest. Um, students participate in Peer Leaders, which is an online course, um, whether we're distance learning or not, it's online. And it provides the training for them to peer, uh, be a peer leader. And then they put that into practice. So students are then um, enrolled as a fire crew leader, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, or another way to mentor on campus. The senior level course to that is they're taking classes at Ventura College and they're supported. Um, this is a program I support. So with me, we meet once a week with guest speakers and we talk about what they're doing in college so that if they need any help with the classes they're taking, they're taking child development classes at Ventura College so they can start on their pathway um, to a career in education. And our final pathway at Foothill is our graphics pathway. Um, and uh, Mr. Crouch runs this is the sequence of classes. It's digital media, arts and communications is the sophomore level course. And again, these classes are open to anyone, but any student who wants to be part of the pathway will take the whole series of class. Junior year um, is the design class, the same class the DTech Academy students take. And then senior year is going to be advanced DMAC. And Mr. Crouch is also working on some new courses that go, go along really well with that. So we're excited for the development of that program in our future. Um, we also always have classes for the Career Education Center, which is in Camarillo. So that really adds to the things we can offer and students can take courses out there for free. Um, and they'll work with their counselor to enroll in those. And then of course, community college classes, dual enrollment are always great opportunities for our students to get involved in career education. Next slide. Um, some of our support programs, we have several. We're really big on having that safety net. So we have high expectations for our students, but we're gonna scaffold and support them from right underneath. AVID is one of our programs that is designed for students um, to help them reach their goals of it going to college. It's advancement via individual determination. We are a national site. Um, we've been distinguished with that honor. Uh, it's really promoting a college going uh, campus school wide and there are specific courses. So there's a ninth through 12th grade class where students who need a little bit of support, um, typically students are seeking AVID, their parents have not attended college before. And so by being in a class where we're focused on supporting and bringing in experiences and exposure that they may not otherwise have and helping them through the process, we're helping ensure that our students um, that don't have parents who've attended college and know that process are supported um, in getting the grades that they need to be able to apply to college, filling out those applications, scholarships, and being all around good students. We're very proud of our AVID students um, and they've gone to some amazing schools. So we'll see that slide at the end. Renaissance is another amazing support program. It's run by our ASB students, but it's um, it's similar to an honor roll program, uh, but, but we honor a couple different ways. So it, above a 3.0 GPA is recognized, but also a 0.5 GPA improvement. So going from a 2.0 to a 2.5 is a really big achievement. And so we recognize that with our students um, through our Renaissance program. They, uh, when we're in person, we have field trips, rallies, t-shirts, prizes, weekly activities out on the stage. And our ASB students really do a great job of getting feedback from our whole student body to see uh, what kind of incentives and rewards would really inspire students to give their best at school. We have 84% of our students on Renaissance. So that means they're above a 3.0 or they've improved recently with a 0.5. So great, great program and we love celebrating our academic successes for our students. And these are just a few events that we've had. And you can see that they're happy. There's our AVID students in the bottom. And um, the jumpy was for one of the celebrations to honor our students who did a good job the previous semester. Next slide. FIRE is Foothill Intervention, Retention, and Enrichment. So when we are on campus, this program is a midday advisory period. All our ninth graders are enrolled in this um, in a small setting in a teacher's room, but they have mentors who are juniors and seniors. And these mentors are enrolled in peer leaders, so they're receiving the guidance they need to be a great mentor for their students. Um, it involves tutoring and enrichment. Um, it's a great time for students to be able to talk to upperclassmen about ideas. They 
they can also check into their fire class, but then go visit another teacher who they may need help with. A lot of times students will have their class on Tuesday, they're writing their goals, they're getting their agenda organized, doing binder checks, and then Wednesday they may check in and say, I need to go to my math class so I can ask questions about this homework assignment. And then, um, you know, they have different opportunities. So we have um, seen really great success and our amount of students with D's and F's have dropped when we're in person um, thanks to this program and it's run by Miss Carr and the hook and ladder comes in and they pose for a beautiful picture with their fire shirts. Um, we love our fire crew leaders. They're a big aspect of our campus and making all of our ninth graders feel welcome. And um, we're really glad to set up that dynamic and those relationships with, with our upperclassmen and ninth graders of peer mentor and um, inclusion. Next slide. Um, school activities. So these are one of the best parts of high school is getting to participate in dances and rallies. And we have so many clubs. I encourage you to go to our website. Um, I could be here all day listening off and talking about every club we offer on campus, but but clubs are student driven. And so if a small group of students is ready to start a club, there's an application and Captain Lindsay is our activities advisor and she's happy to walk them through how to start their own club. So if there's not a club that is um, the right fit, we could start another. Uh, and and the students do, it's really fun to see the things that they're interested in. Um, Air Guitar is one of our biggest events. It's a talent show. And so all the students gather in the quad and we have this kind of big show on a Friday afternoon. Um, food's brought in and we have a good time hanging out in the quad as a whole campus together. Um, and there's always lunchtime activities going on. Our, our student leaders um, through our ASB class do a great job of putting on activities to keep our students engaged. And I am going to turn it over to Coach Brown. Thank you so much, Ms. Duffy. Um, my name is Jamal Brown, and I am the athletic director, and I'm also the boys basketball coach uh, at Foothill Technology High School. And I have the honor and the privilege to talk about uh, some of our ed physical education options that we have here at Foothill. So uh, we do have an on-campus dance class. Um, and it is led by a professional dance instructor. Uh, you would get PE credit for taking that class, and so that is a wonderful option uh, for those of you that may be interested in dance. Uh, we also have a supervised program uh, that we conduct at the Mavericks Gym. Uh, we partner with community-based uh, private uh, and also uh, community-based athletic facilities such as Ventura College, but one of them is Mavericks Gym, which is right around the corner from Foothill. And so we're able to offer a supervised program uh, through Mavericks Gym for PE credit as well. Uh, we do have our traditional PE classes on campus in which we utilize different facilities on campus. Uh, we also have an independent study program, which is available to sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Uh, independent study is a program in which we recognize that Foothill being the, having the academic reputation that it has, that many times uh, our students uh, participate in other activities that are related to athletics. Uh, some of the programs or some of the different types of activities such as we have rowers in our independent state program. We have uh, club soccer players. We have Taekwondo members. Uh, we have ballet. So there's a number of different options that are available through independent study. Again, that you can receive physical education credit at Foothill. And I would advise you if you are interested in independent study, you can go to the foothilltechnology.org website and if you click on athletics, uh, there is a link to our independent study program that would give you more information about independent study. Uh, and then we have athletics uh, as, a, as a physical education option as well. Next slide, please. Uh, Foothill does have athletics. Um, and I know uh, for some of you that may be a surprise, but we are actually in year seven of our interscholastic athletics at Foothill Tech. Um, we have a few core principles that we abide by, um, being such, having such a rich academic tradition. Uh, that is first and foremost always, uh, but we also believe in a very balanced approach and realize the importance of athletics to many of our student athletes. Uh, we pride ourselves on having a number of unified programs. Um, we collaborate on daily basis with our different sport coaches, uh, and they collaborate on a daily basis to make the facilities that are available uh, to Foothill Technology High School throughout the community. 
you know, with the overall goal of developing a fitness for life type mentality for our students at Foothill. Uh, we realize that everybody's athletic career eventually comes to an end, but we want to provide that broad based uh, fitness for life type uh, uh, programs for our student athletes so that they can continue their fitness well beyond their time at Foothill Technology High School. We do compete in the Tri-County Athletic Association with a number of our teams either competing in either the Tri-Valley or the Frontier Leagues. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, I like to, we also try to not focus on the sports that we don't offer at Foothill. I believe that's a very half empty type mentality, but we would like to also focus on the sports that we do uh, offer at Foothill. And those sports that we do offer at Foothill are boys and girls volleyball, boys and girls water polo, boys and girls cross country. We offer baseball, softball, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls tennis, boys and girls swim, boys and girls track and field, boys and girls soccer, and also boys and girls golf. So a number of sports we do offer at Foothill and we have very successful programs. Our innovative program uh, we call CAP, which stands for Core Athletics Program. Again, more information can be had at the foothilltechnology.org uh, website if you click on athletics. But our core athletic program is a program that is designed to, again, provide the lifelong fitness, uh, those opportunities for our student athletes to stay in shape year round when they're not necessarily participating in their sports season. They have an opportunity to participate in our CAPS program, which is focused more on general athleticism and improving that athleticism throughout the year. Uh, we have top notch coaches, we have top notch facilities. Uh, we are right across the street from Ventura College, so having the ability to utilize facilities like Ventura College to have access to the Ventura Aquatic Center uh, for our aquatics programs. Um, and we do partner with our VUSD uh, partner schools as well to help mitigate and provide our facilities in terms of practices. Uh, we were awarded in 2018 the CIF Southern Section Commissioner's Cup. Uh, which we were recognized in the top 10 uh, out of 500 schools or over 500 schools. Uh, also in 2018, we're the Division IV California Athletic Program of the Year. Uh, in our short seven year existence, we've garnered over 50 league championships, six CIF team runner up, six CIF team championships, three CIF individual champions. We've had one state individual champion, which was in 2019. Brooke Secreto out of our girls cross country program. And we've had four CIF state championships. So a very rich tradition in just a short seven year span at Foothill Tech. And with that, I will turn it over to, I'm not even sure who's next. It's me, <laughs> you're hey. good. Thank right. you. Um, I, you know, looking, it's so fun to look back at all the pictures and these students we remembered. I was enjoying seeing those athletes, uh, Coach Brown. Um, and one of the things that we're also very proud of at Foothill is um, the philosophy of serving your community. And we really, we really ingrain that into students to serve and to find a way to put yourself out there to help. And so um, we ask all of our students to complete 60 hours of community service uh, as a requirement for the graduation ceremony. And during these times of distance learning, we understand that that's a struggle. And so we've made adjustments to that and we will continue to adjust um, as need be. But but overall, I'm so proud of the number of students that have still continued to serve and find ways. When, when there was a shutdown, the students were one of the first groups I went to um, when Ventura County healthcare system reached out and they were asking for people to start sewing masks and people to start ironing trash bags into gowns. Um, our students stepped up quickly and our HOSA group, which is part of our Bioscience Academy, um, made their own group and started sewing. It, it was really a beautiful thing to see our students serve. And so that's something that we're always going to be supporting. Um, and so we're always presenting opportunities. Um, that's part of my role and finding ways that we can get out in the community to serve. So we've gotten really creative this year. Um, we have a buddies program where 
where our big buddies are serving uh, little buddies in the district are, are K through five. And I just extended it to eighth grade if they wanted to join once a week on Zoom. Um, we've had students writing cards to convalescent homes. We've had students sewing. We've had students um, go out and help at the food banks because a lot of those volunteers are elderly and they couldn't come. So um, in a typical year when we're in person, we have some bigger projects and you can see that um, over the years we've done big fundraisers. That was um, Miss Yulao and Miss Swans who no longer start our school, but they raised money for Sierra Leone to build a school. And then this is Captain, our activities divisor down here who shaved her head at St. Baldrick's. We did a huge fundraiser school-wide to raise money. Um, and then the list just goes on and there's lots of ways to get involved. And we look forward to having your students be part of that tradition. And um, that exposure to different service helps them find the right career path and figure out what they wanna do in life. Um, and it really creates um, an environment of a lifelong giver. And, and that's my hope when students leave Foothill is that they didn't just do community service. They may have started as a requirement, right? They may have started that way, but when they finish, they found a reason and the good and how, uh, how wonderful it makes them feel to help someone else. Um, and our next slide is, um, it's just a spattering of all the wonderful places that we've sent our students. And so um, you can see that we've sent students all across the country and we really try to leave options open for every student. Life is a little different right now. And so um, we've been helping students one-on-one -on -one get to their colleges and to submit their applications um, and continue to follow their dreams. And, and we will continue to do that. But one of the things I love about Foothill is students have a choice. And so when we get to senior year, whatever life brings them, we've worked to have college level courses. And so they're A through G ready. A through G are the requirements that you need to apply to a UC and a CSU school. Those are California schools. And so they have the choice to put their application in. They are qualified. Um, and the reality is some of them are ready to go and do that. And some of them are ready to go across the street to Ventura College. A lot of our students go to Ventura College and we're very proud of our students. You look at our world and you're going to college. And so I think that that's an important piece to foster that we, we really welcome all of our students. We wanna provide them the opportunity to choose their path and to have their options open to whatever works when they get to that senior year and it's time to choose. Um, and we're going to help them with that process and that transition so that they're not only successful at Foothill, but we've transitioned them to be successful at that next level. Um, and we've had a lot of students come back from some of these schools and say how grateful they are to our Foothill teachers for how well prepared they were to be successful. We had one that just graduated Harvard, I know that he was like, man, our writing teachers made me excel there. And so um, he was he was really proud of that. And we've had some of our science kids, that's who I talk to the most, um, be so excited from their biotech skills to come back. And so we will continue to foster um, open doors and open options for all of our students. Uh, and uh, I think it goes back to Mr. Gibbs to tell some more fun things about them. Yeah. I could give you a few more selling points uh, to our school. And ones I'm about to give you are a perfect reflection of the dedication that our staff has towards every student's success, as well as the hard work that our students put in. Um, it's really just a beautiful cycle of what our students and teachers do together to create great accomplishments. But uh, as of 2019, we were in the top 1% of high schools in America. Uh, from U.S. News and World Reports and Newsweek. Uh, we were the number 88 ranked Madrid School in America in 2019 from U.S. News and World Report. Uh, Newsweek top 100 high schools in America, ranked number 77 in the overall rankings and number 54 uh, when taking into consideration the percentage of low-income students in 2014. 60% uh, of our graduates enrolled in a four-year university compared to the state average of 15 to 20%, and that's 20, from 2018. Um, our California State Division IV, we were Athletic Program of the Year in 2018 that Coach Brown noted earlier. Um, back when uh, the state had the API measure, uh, we, we topped out at 906, uh, which was in the top 25 high schools in California. And we've been the National Blue Ribbon School in California Distinguished School on multiple occasions. Um, 
obviously all of these distinctions come from hard work, uh, staff collaboration, and really teaming up on a mission that every student succeeds here. And as we move forward and with me um, really being the third principal of this school and one after 20 years of Mr. Bova's leadership, we're really dedicated that every student has not only the opportunity to change who they are, but really guide their own path into whatever change they want to bring to the world. That's really what we're aiming for here, that every student has the opportunity to change the world um, as they see fit for themselves and for the greater good. Uh, we're very dedicated to that. So we're very proud of our students and I'm very proud of the staff uh, that I get to work with on, on a daily basis here. So to conclude tonight, um, if you want to head over to this site, this is our link to our virtual campus tour that was created by our ASB. So it's a bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash FTHS info night. Um, it's on YouTube. I think you can search it as well. I think we opened it up. But if you just want to type that in, you can head on over to the virtual tour to end your evening. And this will also be linked on our website tomorrow after 10 a.m. Just need to give us a little time in the morning to get that um, linked up. So um, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, I want to thank the, the um, esteemed panel, Ms. Tedford, Ms. Duffy, Coach Brown, Ms. Cruz, um, and of course, Ms. Ferris, class of 20, class of 2021. Thank you all for being here. We'll be happy to take any questions you may have at the end. If you got all your questions answered, have a great evening. And we hope we get to serve you here as a student and parents of Foothill. So thank you, everyone. If there's any questions, you're free to put them in the chat. Or you're free to raise your hand and we can unmute you. Principal Gibbs, do you have access to unmute or would you like me to take care of that as the hands are raised? Probably do, let's see. My first time doing it on the webinar. So if you can do it faster than I can, you're more than welcome to. Oh, I think it's Miss Sarah Baumgartner. Yes, hi, good evening. Thank you very much for this presentation. It was very informative. Um, one question I do have is when we attended the um, initial school of choice inform informational meeting, it was mentioned that because of uh, distance learning being so prominent now due to our situation that some families, some students have found that this actually, it, it's, it's a better um, learning platform than say a traditional high school. And it was encouraged that we bring it up at uh, with different schools that we're interested in. Like, where do you, see distance learning happening, should this continue, or if we go back to a traditional setting, do you have options to continue distance learning where maybe the, the student is under the umbrella of Foothill Tech, but is taking distance learning courses versus being on campus? I know we have talked about that. Uh, we definitely talked about that over the summer and early in the fall. We have not talked about it probably since we've had our schedule final, since we had our schedule finalized, but it, it was something we are considering, yes. Um, I, I can't speak to its uh, finality right now, but it was something that was being considered earlier in the year. Got it, thank you very much. You're welcome. Do we have anyone else with a question? If so, you can raise your hand uh, with a, little raise my hand icon. Ms. Tedford, anyone else? Do we have any questions I, in? I see a question in the chat about the new art program starting at F Foothill mentioned. I'm assuming that you're asking about our graphics program, our pathway. Um, and so I'll take that one. Um, and Mr. Crouch is teaching that. We've started the digital media arts and communication course this year that we have sophomores in. Um, the senior level to that will be advanced digital media arts and the junior level class is um, a design class as well. And that kind of, it weaves with our DTAC Academy on um, that junior level class. And so the focus of that is design and, and being able to communicate. Uh, we're finding that the careers that are available for 
in the arts right now are very consultant based. So it's important to build the skill set of a variety of skills and um, in the arts. And so we have graphic design in there. He's doing some video making. Um, photography is woven in. And he has a website as well. So if you go to the Foothill website, you can click off of our programs and you'll find more about the art program um, straight from the words of Mr. Crouch, who has the vision and is piecing together the se sequence of those crosses. Hopefully that answered your question a little bit, but throw your hand up if you want more. So, Ms. Baumgartner, I see you've got your hand muted again. So, <laughs> sorry, not well, muted. Well, you don't have your hand muted. It's raised. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, again, this is more. This is for the athletic director. Um, in your athletics program, is it primarily just varsity, or is there JV um, levels as well, soft rosh, that kind of thing, or is it all just it's varsity or nothing? Sorry, I need to unmute myself. Um, no, that's a that's a great question. It was actually asked in the chat by somebody else. So I'm, I'm okay. glad that you actually unmuted yourself and asked. Um, so for the majority of our sports, we do offer at least uh, varsity and JV. Um, there are a few sport programs uh, that are a little bit larger. Like I know off the top of my head, our girls volleyball program has typically had also a frosh uh, soft team as well. So they have three levels. Uh, but I'm looking at my list right now, and it appears that every other team that we have at least offers a, uh, both a varsity and a JV type level. Terrific. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. And pardon me if I get the name incorrect. Is it Shirley? Shirlene. Shirlene. Sorry, Shirlene. It's okay. Um, I was just wondering, is you talked about art, is there a requirement to do an art type of class um, like there is at the other high schools? And do you have any music program there? I can speak to the music program. We don't have a music program, but if you are accepted, you can take music at your boundary school. But you okay. can't so if your your boundary is pointed, you have to take it at Boina. You can't take it at, at Ventura. Um, as for the art question, um, so art isn't necessarily a VUSD graduation requirement, but what you might have been thinking as like the requirement wise is it's an A through G requirement. Uh, it's fine arts is one of those, and when we say A through G, those are. Um, it's kind of the list of classes you need to apply to a UC or a CSU. Those are the California colleges. And so we will definitely encourage students to fulfill that requirement so that they have the options if they so choose um, in their senior year to apply to one of those. Did that answer your question? I guess what type of classes does that entail that is are part of those art type of classes that they're at Foothill? Great question. Um, we're going to have our fine arts program, which is art one, and it follows with art two, art three, and we have AP art for that. And then the design classes that we talked about for that pathway also fulfill those requirements. Um, there's, I think drama does as well. Miss Cruz, do you know any others that fulfill the F? Miss Tedford. I'm sorry, say that again at our school. Yeah, they're, they're looking for um, A through G, what would fulfill the fine art requirement. Did right, the arts off? classes, the drama class. Um, otherwise, they do have the option to take a class at uh, the college um, or the classes at the boundary schools. So to fulfill that uh, requirement, I understand music as part of that. So if he wanted to use do music Ah, are you still there? Yes, yes, we're still here. They were just changing the slide okay. to give <laughs> people like... the link. Yeah, sorry, okay. we just got some we're requests good. for the Bitly message, so I'm going to okay, back no up. Problem. My apologies. No problem. The, I just but yes, I just if they connected. take music at another school. So the, music could count it from, but from another school? Yes. Okay. I, I just you, wanted to understand that. Okay, thank yeah. you. 
You're welcome. And you'll work with your counselor and they, they're great at helping make sure that all the students meet the requirements so that they leave all their options open. Okay, thank you so much. That answered my question. Alisa H. Yes, hi, it was a little bit touched on in the last question, but I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to the drama uh, or the, or is there, are there plays? Is there musical theater? Is there a dance team? Could someone maybe touch on that? Um, we do not have a dance team. Uh, we have a dance class that meets for PE, but we do not have a dance team. Um, and that would not fulfill the F requirement. Drama does do plays, uh, of course, right now with distance learning, uh, it's a little bit trickier, but yes, they do, um, they do have like set design and things like that. And they do, uh, they try to put on a play uh, usually in the spring. Um, and then I'm sorry, what was the other question or the other part of the question? Musical theater, musical? No. No, we do not have, well, because we don't have a music program. So the musical theater, the music program would be offered at the boundary schools. So you could audition for say Ventura High School's spring musical and be considered to participate in an after school. If Ventura is your boundary school. Right, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. We do have a drama class, which also puts on plays as well. Typically, it's one in the fall and one in the spring that students could participate in. Thank you. Coach Brown, there's a question in the chat that I'm going to let you answer that's about basketball practices and how many basketball practices are scheduled per week. As a resident basketball coach, I think you might be the best one to answer that one. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm on it. I'm typing answering. right now. I'm a little bit uh, slow. So I, Elizabeth can answer for the girls side and I'm, I can be happy to do it for the boys. I'm typing right now. Thanks. Sherilyn, <laughs> um, did you have another question or was your hand still raised from the last time? I have another question I thought of. It's about sports. Um, I was going to ask well, first of all, is PE is general PE required all four years? Second question, what season is the water boys water polo in particular? And then I have another question if if I could get that answered probably, but first, depending yeah. on what season that is. So uh, great question. So uh, I'm sorry, I was typing your first, the first part of your question was, I'm sorry. First part of my question is PE required um, or general PE required um, and how many years of general PE or, I mean, if, is it required for anybody for freshman year or everybody freshman year or can you do other sports freshman year? So you would be eligible to play any sport uh, freshman year. You, you would have tryout periods for each and every sport. So you're, you're eligible for athletics immediately as a freshman uh, and beyond. And is it two years, am I correct, with required for PE? Um, two That's years correct. of PE required, uh, at, you know, at which point if you chose to take PE after those two years, you certainly can and get elective credit. Um, but, but that's what the requirement is, is two years for PE. Okay, so second question, what season is boys water polo there? Uh, are you talking about COVID or non-COVID season? Um, regular season, what, yes. when is boys so, water polo? So regular season boys water polo would be in our fall sports season. Uh, it would be considered fall a fall only. sports sport. And it's only in fall, they don't do anything the rest of the year? That's, that's well, they, they may, you know, a lot of our boys water polo players uh, participate in swimming uh, come the springtime, uh, oh, okay. but, but they would have the option to participate in either another sport that Foothill offers after their water polo season, uh, or they could stay in our CAP program, our core athletics program year round to where they could do some dry land type training uh, and stay in shape year round. Okay, so I have another question now. Um because of that answer. Um, my son in particular plays hockey and it's co considered, there's considered a high school program through the schools, I believe. Um, is that count for PE for this? 
So depending on which or where he participated in hockey, um, if he could fulfill the requirements to be in our independent study PE program, okay. uh, that is potentially that he could receive PE credit through independent study. Uh, but okay. that wouldn't have to be something that we'd have to explore through the application process. And then also okay. which group or activity vendor does he participate through? All right. That was it. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. Mr. Jenkins, your question? Yeah, our son is uh, very serious about tennis and we were just wondering uh, who they would play against in their division, different schools or what have you, and if he could play as a freshman. Yeah, so again, um, we don't restrict uh, students by age. Uh, if you know a freshman is good enough to play on the varsity tennis team and they make the varsity via tryouts, they are certainly eligible for that. Um, but also we have a JV program in both the boys and the girls uh, tennis programs. And then competing in the uh, but uh, Tri-Valley League, um, that's who our, typically our league opponents are, but we do schedule uh, other tennis matches with a variety of, of local schools. And then depending on what tournament might be available that particular year, the scheduling is really left up to our uh, individual tennis coaches, both boys and girls. Great, thank you. You're very welcome. Any questions, please raise your hand. But it's also okay if you don't have any. I right. think that might be it. I think that might be it. Well, thank you again, everyone. Of course, if you have a question that comes to you later in the night, feel free to reach out to any of us on our web. Our emails are on our website, either under admin or athletics. Please reach out with any questions that you may have, but thank you so much everyone for being here. It's a pleasure. Hopefully you found what you found what you need and hopefully we'll be seeing you again real soon. But thank you everyone.